Hey there, thanks so much for checking out Mission Church. We would love to see you right here at 82 Stratford Drive on the weekend. We've got services on Saturdays at 5.30 p.m. and on Sundays at 8.30, 10, and 11.30 a.m. Grateful that you're tuning in. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our messages. And for right now, let's dive in to this message. Mission Church, it is great to be with y'all. And as John said today, we are kicking off a three-week series called Do Family Better. Let's all say that to own that together. Do Family Better. Yeah, so today in these next uh, three weeks, you know, we are going to be specifically focusing on the family. I'm going to be taking us to a passage in the book of Deuteronomy, fifth book of the Old Testament, that's going to help us anchor family in God's design and become more actionable in how to do family better. Now, before I kick off this series, in in a room this size, uh, I gotta call out the obvious. Our family pictures are all over the map in here. Based on your background, uh, in this relay of life, the baton that you inherited, maybe it was passed from generation to generation to generation, maybe it was fumbled when it was getting passed to you, maybe it's being broken half as it's handed to you. The family pictures that we all have in here are unique and distinct, but today is going to be a day for you and I to choose to begin or begin again to do family better. I don't know what your family picture looks like, uh, but maybe your family picture looks like this family picture. The Incredibles, all right? Action-packed. They are suspenseful. A lot of activity, always on the go, always on the move. Maybe that is kind of the picture of your family picture. Uh, Maybe it's not that one. Maybe it's this one, The Sopranos. This is going to be your kitchen in about an hour and a half. I know how Bloomingdale is, all right? Maybe this is your family, a little secretive, got some skeletons in the closet, a little dust under the rug. Maybe that's the picture of your family as you sit today. Uh, Maybe it's not that picture of a family. Maybe it's this picture. Yeah, a little strange. And you'd be like, yep, that's us. We're creepy and we're kooky, mysterious and spooky. We're all together, ooky. That's my family. Maybe that's you. Uh, This is my family. Oh, yeah. So that's my wife, Grace. Uh, We married 15 years in June. Um, Our little girl, Elliot, she's five, mouth like a motorboat. And then uh, our son, Wells, he's too sneaky shifty. If he dodges through your legs in the lobby, I apologize in advance. But I love my family. And we're all of the above. A little suspenseful, a little secretive, a little strange. But as I stand before you today, I want to do family better. In fact, when uh, I met Grace's family for the first time, once we were kind of engaged and married. We did, I think it was the first Thanksgiving. You know how when you figure out, like, we want your family's my family. So we went to her family's for Thanksgiving, and I discovered, and they still have it to this day, they have a two-hour rule. They all walk in, and a clock starts. And at two hours, they stand up and go, ah, we better get going, and they all just leave. And I was like, really? And one of her uncles is like, Dan, look. There's only two things that stink really bad when packed together for over two hours, fish and family. So we just cut it and run. And I was like, oh, wow, this is incredible. Family can be finicky. Uh, My uncle, God love him, uh, on grace of my wedding day, this was before videographers and choreographers at weddings, we just had a tripod with a camera. And my uncle decided to just do this and stand in front of the video for the entire ceremony. So when we go back and reminisce, it's just a picture of a black suit jacket for 30 minutes. (laughs) Family can be frustrating. Uh, My dad lost his dad at eight years old, tragically and sadly. And then his mom passed when he was 16. And so my dad was basically raised by his older brother. Family can be really fragile. I have my family, and you have your family. And so whether you inherited a family legacy of faith or a family legacy of frustration, today is your and my opportunity to begin or begin again to do family better. It doesn't matter the role you play, whether you're a mom in here, a dad, a son or a daughter, 
a grandparent or a great-grandparent, today is your opportunity to walk out of here owning two things that I have been praying you would own today. I know one thing is true of every single person in this room. You want better for your family. You do. You wouldn't work so hard, plan so hard to fit it all in, buy buy so much so your family never goes without, watch so many hours of Bluey, sleep so few hours, play so much travel ball, spend so much money on Taylor Swift tickets, drive by, fly in to visit if you didn't want better for your family. So let's start with the heart. If you desire today to do family better, raise your hand. Yeah, okay, most of us. The others, you're perfect. I would love to learn from your family. (laughs) And so since we all share that desire to do family better, I want to take that desire and look back at God's design for the family. Because whether or not you know it, whether or not I like to admit it, our desires stem from God's design. And so let's flip all the way back to Genesis 1 where we see God's design for the family. Here it is, Genesis 1.27. It says, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. In God's perfect and beautiful design, he created two genders for one purpose. What is it? The very next verse. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Be fruitful and multiply. Start families that start families that start families. No one has ever and no one will ever come up with a better design for the family than God himself. A male and female joined together under the authority of God, obeying the first commandment of God to be fruitful and multiply. The family was created to bear the fruitful and loving image of God throughout the entire earth, and throughout all of time. In short, family was designed to flourish. Your family was designed to flourish. This is the design. This doesn't mean it's not difficult. In fact, it only takes one turn of the page of the Bible to see what happens to the first family. Not too long after the creation, the man quits his job, fumbles his responsibility, the wife turns on her husband, they bring sin and separation from God into all of creation that affects every single one of us, and one son murders another. I thought my Thanksgiving was awkward. (laughs) This is what happens. Family is designed to flourish, yet so often it doesn't feel like flourishing. It feels like floundering. And so if today you sit here and feel a little bit like your family's floundering, I want you to walk out of here holding on to these two things for your, fl- your family to flourish. Here they are. Your promise and our partnership. All right, say that with me. Your promise and our partnership. All right, first, let's look at your promise. When it comes to family, there is no owner's manual for every situation. You know this. But there is a promise for every person. Moses, in the book of Deuteronomy, he's finishing his lineage as the leader God appointed over his people. So Moses is speaking to families, and he's equipping them for the future. They're walking into a new land that's going to have new language, new philosophies, new perspectives, new priorities for their lives, new traditions, new religions, new identities, new sexualities. And so if, like them, you feel like you can't keep track of everything that's bombarding your family, God's word has words to help you do family better. And they're straight from Moses, and they're straight to these families, and they're straight to you. So let's look at the best parenting advice ever given, and it's for you. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Now, it's a little long, so I'm going to read this part, but I just want you to lean into the words that are bolded and see who this promise is for. These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you 
to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God, as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. That sounds like a great promise. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. These words are your promise for you, the person in your chair, and for it to impact your family. This is your promise. You want to do family better. He looks at every mom and every dad and every grandparent and great-grandparent every uncle, aunt, and kid, and he says, hey, you want to do family better? Remember your first love. He says, fear the Lord. Love him first. Love him with everything. There's going to be a lot pulling on you and vying for your attention as you live this life as a family. Remember your first love. To the parents, he says, your kids are not your first love. And you love them a lot. Your spouse is not your first love. Jerry Maguire, you complete me. Romantic, but wrong. (laughs) Remember your first love. Providing for your family all of the best and protecting them from all of the worst. That is a noble aim. But it's not your first first priority. Moses says, remember your first love. Fear the Lord. Here is the promise in a phrase. The fear of the Lord leads to the flourishing of the family. Every other intention is a good intention, but it's not a foundational promise. This is. The fear of the Lord leads to the flourishing of the family. So what does that mean? Fear the Lord. Fear. Let me be clear on fear. It's not coercive. It's not fear God or else. And maybe you've had family that's spoken that way and even churches that have taken that approach. This isn't that fear. This fear is not manipulative, restrictive, or destructive. It's formative. It forms you. It forms your family. It keeps you. It protects you. It's a deep appreciation and awe for God and his promises in your life. You ever had one of those moments where someone in your family, maybe your spouse, just kind of slips in as like super dad? Like when I do flying into the kitchen to open the jar of pickles for my wife, she's like, oh, thank you. Or when I watch my wife, Grace, she just like handles a tricky situation with such strength and grace. You just see the person in their element and your gratitude increases for them. Maybe your heart starts to beat a little bit faster for them. Your appreciation, your awe of the role and the value that they're contributing, they're doing something for you that you could not do for yourself. That's this fear. This word fear is used 320 times in the Bible. It means to revere, to stand in awe of, and the fear of the Lord leads to the flourishing of the family. If that fear... That reverence for God influences the words that come out of your mouth. You will witness your family flourish. Come back next week. Week two, John's teaching all about communication in the family. It's going to be really helpful. When that fear of the Lord influences the work that comes from your hands, the security that comes from your soul, you will model a faith that helps your family flourish. It'll impact your kids and their kids and their kids' kids. If you and I want to do family better, the fear of the Lord leads to the flourishing of the family. This is your promise. And so I want you to leave holding on to it today. Remember that on your worst day and on my worst day, as we turned our back to our father and we walked our own way, like every single kid who's ever been born does, Your father, out of his love for you, sent his son Jesus to the cross so that you and I might be brought back into the family of God, called a son, called a daughter. And you and I, we get to operate that from that place. And having and holding that fear of the Lord, it leads to the flourishing of the family. 
This is your promise. But it continues. So the second half of this is we get to talk about our partnership. And I'm talking about the partnership between your family and the church. There's a partnership here. And when it comes to the partnership between family and church, research shows the family has disproportionate influence. Your influence cannot be outsourced, but it can be optimized. It can't be outsourced. I've looked into it. No one will take my kids. They're mine. And it's my opportunity. And your family, whatever the family photo is, is yours. But it's your opportunity. So hold on to the first, your promise. The fear of the Lord leads to the flourishing of the family. And then this part, our partnership. Hear this. In this partnership, for you to do family better, your everyday has more influence than our one day. Your every day has way more influence than our one day. I love that you're here. Keep showing up. Make it a family challenge to be here for all three weeks. High fives all around. It matters more than you know. And your every day has more influence than our one day. In one year, Mission Church, as you guys gather here and your kids are in kids or in middle school or high school, Mission Church's opportunity is about 40 hours of influence with your family. Your opportunity is in one year, you have 3,000 hours to influence your family. So here's how this breaks down. See that little sliver up there? That's this. You see all the rest of that? That's where your family can flourish with your influence. So what is our commitment? What is our contribution in this partnership? To steward those 40 hours we have with you and your family to strategically optimize your opportunity to experience the Deuteronomy 6 promise of a flourishing family for you and your kids and their kids and their kids. And so when you drop off or you pick up your kids if you have them or grandkids and mission kids, you see our contribution in this partnership on the words on the wall. It says this, this is kids. We are focused on connecting kids to a small circle of peers and a trusted team of volunteers that are partnering with parents. Not replacing parents, nope. A second voice, a third voice, to instill in them the promises of God, to partner with parents, to help each child see God for who he is, help them see themselves the way God sees them, and help them to love others the way God loves them so they can take Jesus to their home, school, and neighborhood. This is our partnership as the church. We want to help. So what is your opportunity? What can you practically do with those other 3,000 hours? I'm glad you asked. Spend some of them coming back over the next three weeks. Then, let's see what Moses' practical words are for how to maximize those hours, the 3,000, to do family better. He continues in Deuteronomy. Read the bold words with me here. All right, now it's an all skate. We're in together. Impress them on your children. About them when you at home and when you and when you lie down. Sorry, I did that. And when you Get up. Good job. All right. We get, I'll give us an 87. Okay. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Do you know what this means? I love this because this is efficient for me as a parent and for you. To do family better, you have to add nothing but steward one thing. To start or start again to do family better, you don't have to add anything new. Just steward one thing well. What is it? Moments. These everyday moments that Moses lays out. Let's just agree to stop talking about time. We lost the battle with time a long time ago. None of us have enough of it. It just keeps going. But you can steward moments really well. And so Moses points out these moments that we can maximize I love how simple they are to make an impression. Talking, when you're sitting, I could do that. 
walking, lying down. You're a pro at that one. That counts. Getting up, maximizing these moments to make an impression is the secret to do family better. And impressions are more caught than taught. So let's just look at a couple of them. Moses said, here's a moment. Don't miss it. Talk about them, the promises of God. Talk about them and what he's doing in your life when you sit at home. Jess Bowman on our team, she leads our mission kids. She has created an incredibly helpful resource. It's the Vinny placemat to help you maximize the table at home. And so if you've got young ones, littles in mission kids like I do, Grab one of these placemats. They're right out by Mission Kids before you leave today. You can leave equipped with this as a parent. There's a little QR code you can scan and just equips the parents on how to maximize uh, the table moments, bathtub moments, laying down moments, getting up in the morning moments. There's a memory passage for every month that you can do with your little one. Talk about them at home. And yes, it'll be clunky to start. And yes, they won't sit there like they're perfect. Half the time, I'm running around and lovingly threatening, sit still. Okay, safe place. No guilt here. But you can maximize a moment to instill and impress the promise that is for you, for them. Talk about them at home. If you're a parent in here with a middle schooler, they have a daily Bible devotional. Talk about that at home. You don't need to talk back. Just go, hey, what are you learning and reading? And listen, if you have a high schooler, the faith is now becoming more and more of their own and they have all of their own questions. And in high school, they have weekly Bible memorization that they're doing and challenges from Joe on our staff to go and light up their schools with the love of Jesus. Ask them what they're learning. Talk about it when you're at home. Moses says, talk about it. Maximize the everyday moment. He says, as you walk along the road, do not miss, parent, how spiritually significant a walk with those in your family can be. There are moments that God wants to do as you walk. This Monday, had a full day of meetings. I was back to back to back to back to back. Had a little window of time. And then our daughter, Elliot, had, I think, like ballet practice straight into soccer practice. Why do we do this to ourselves? But nonetheless, that was our schedule. And I had like 20 minutes of downtime. And so our family, we walk. And so I grabbed my little two-year-old Wells and I said, bud, we're going on a walk. And so we walked down the street by our house. It was only about 20 minutes. I didn't have an agenda, didn't have time. But we're walking. And when dad walks, he strolls. This is me right here. I'm in first gear. Not much more than this. I'm looking at the forest. I'm strolling. We're walking. And my little guy Wells, he's behind me. And you know, I'm talking, I'm pointing stuff out, and then he comes up beside me, and then he's walking in front of me, and I notice something about the way he's walking, so I just pulled out my phone and I captured it for you. (laughs) He's walking like his dad. The walk makes an impression. These moments, until he sprints, matter more than you realize. Now, hear this through that video. You multiply who you are. Mom, dad, grandparent, you multiply who you are in these moments. It is way more caught than it is taught. And so he's walking like his dad and he takes off in a sprint and right after that he hears some rustling in the woods and he gets scared. So he stops on a dime, turns around, he comes back and he grabs my leg and he points to the woods. And I was like, bud, what what happened? You scared? He's like, yeah. And I bend down. I go, hey, Wells, show me strong. And he goes, strong. (laughs) And I went, who makes you strong? God makes you strong. Show me strong. Strong. What am I doing? I am impressing upon him, Ephesians 6.10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Maximize moments for the promise for dad to become the promise of a son. You don't need to be perfect. You don't need to be a scholar to do this. You don't need more time. But we can maximize the everyday moments that Moses points out to remind our kids, our grandkids, our nieces, our nephews, those you have influence on, your promise that's for them, and your partnership in the family of God. 
For Elliot, we follow Moses' teaching here and his coaching for parents. We have a lie down and a get up rhythm. When we're lying down, I'm there with Elliot, we're doing our bedtime routine, and I can hear in the next room my wife Grace with Wells doing theirs. And ever since Wells was born, my wife Grace sings one song over him. It's the song, it's an old hymn, it's I Love You, Lord. And from a young age, we began to hear him humming along to the melody. Now he sings along to those words. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice. He doesn't know what they are and what the depth of those words mean yet, but it is an impression upon him. And so I hear them doing that. And so Elliot and I are doing our bedtime routine. We read one chapter from one of her books. Right now it's a Nancy Drew mystery. And we pray. And then in the morning, we read one chapter from dad's book, the Bible, while she eats her breakfast. And so we're just reading a chapter in the book of Acts. And it's amazing to hear what the words mean to a five-year-old's ears. I don't know all the answers, and it's clunky half the time, but there is an impression that she has growing up that she reads her Bible with her dad. And before you look at me with too many rose-colored glasses, there's a lot of bartering and bargaining and promising and tears. We're not perfect, and neither are you. But we can begin and begin again to do family better. Hold on to your promise. Hold on to your and our partnership as the church. For those of you with little kids, grab the Vinny resource. I promise it'll help you do family better. For those of you with high school kids and even college-age kids or starting their own families, very practically, share with them what God is teaching you real time right now. Not just the advice you think they need to hear. What they need more than that is how you are responding to God's voice for you now. That will make an impression upon them. Hold on to your promise. Hold on to our partnership. The fear of the Lord leads to the flourishing of the family. You can do this. You can begin or begin again to do family better. Why do I want this for you? Why do I want this for our partnership as the church? It's to experience more moments like this. This is the Deuteronomy 6 promise in a picture. On that little guy's face is the fear of the Lord, the adventure, the awe, the wonder, the appreciation from generation to generation. It's no coincidence, and it's even happening today, that more and more full families are saying yes to Jesus and getting baptized. This is the work that God is doing. They are holding on to their promise and they are leaning into our partnership. I want this for you and your family. So today we get to begin or begin again. No perfect steps, but faithful ones. And so I want to ask you right now to take your first step, which is if you want to receive prayer and commit to begin again, to do family better. I want you to go ahead and stand right now. I'm going to pray for you. Every mom, every dad, it's an opportunity to start again. Hold on to your promise. And if you've yet to receive the promise of salvation that comes in Jesus, that can be a whole new foundation for a whole new family flourishing, I want you to come forward uh, with our prayer team. They'll be in the back there. They can pray with you today, all right? In the back. You can pray to receive faith in Jesus and you can see your family flourish in new ways. Let's pray as we entrust and commit to do family better. God, I thank you for each person standing here. I thank you for the moms, the dads, the aunts, the uncles, the grandparents, the great-grandparents, the sons, the daughters. And we ask right now by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would encourage us Continue to equip us through engaging in your word. Read this Deuteronomy 6 passage as a promise for us. God, would you help us maximize moments to do family better? To speak the promises to our kids. To experience the flourishing of the family. God, we need you to do this. So it starts with humility. So we stand here, humbly ask help. Would you fill us up with what we need? to do family better. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. 
Thank you so much for tuning in to this message. We are praying that this helps you in your journey in finding and following Christ. As always, we would love to see you right here at Mission on the weekend. We will see you soon. We are Mission.